how I bought my fourth property right before I turned 23, adding two more units to my portfolio. Welcome back everyone. I've been wanting to get around to doing this video and this is a huge milestone in my rental property career because it added two more units to my total rental portfolio, creating six units now and about 1.8 to 1.9 million dollars worth of real estate almost at that magic 2 million number mark but not quite there that is going to be coming soon so stay tuned and enjoy the journey make sure you go ahead and smash the like button and make sure you are subscribed to this channel with notifications turned on so in this video we're not going to be talking about exactly how much i'm making on this property right now we're going to be talking about that in another video but i want to talk about how i bought this property the type of financing that i used and the numbers as far as what it came down to at the closing table. So without further ado, folks, let's get started and dive right in. So first, some context. If you guys are super hardcore fans going all the way back to earlier of 2023, you would know I was actually in the process of buying a business. That business was a hair salon. I did buy it at the end of February old video I made going back a year ago. I can't believe a year has gone by already since I bought that business. Long story short, not to bore you with all the details, it just was not for me and I ended up selling it exactly six months later, end of August. We can make a whole three hour video talking about why I sold it, but long story short, it just was not the right fit. But of course, still a huge fan of real estate, still putting all my money in there and despite the fact I'm going through a lot with evictions, flooded units and vacancies, you name it, uh, still a lot. But hey, you know, those are the headaches that come along with the business. I'm still a fan, I'm still pro real estate. So I had to use the proceeds from that sale and immediately had to go ahead and buy a property. Now you guys are probably thinking, wait a second, the interest rates are at an all time high, well, not all time high, but at least the highest they've been in decades. Why on earth would you buy now? Well, it's very simple folks. You're getting some good deals out there. If you can afford it, if you have the resources, if you have the money, now is a good time to lock in a good price where your loan amount will stay the same. It's not going to change, but yes, you would be locking in a higher interest rate for now. My plan, of course, is to refinance as rates go down. The interest rate I got on this property is probably not favorable to the bulk of you, but hey, it's still cash flows even with this interest rate. So it's going to be a fun time when I go ahead and refinance it a few years down the road. So even leading up, days leading up to the sale date of the salon, I was already looking at properties in the area, seeing what I could do, seeing what I can get my hands on. But the fact is that inventory is pretty tight, right guys? I mean, people are holding on to those threes and fours in for interest rates, right? They don't want to get rid of those houses because if they, if they do sell those houses, they have to now buy something else or rent somewhere else, which is still exorbitant. Right, so inventory is super tight. It's tough for both buyers and sellers, and no one wants to get rid of their beautiful three and four percent interest rates. So I wasn't really seeing a whole lot of opportunity around here on Long Island. So I actually ventured out a little bit because I wanted to start maybe looking at an area not too far away, but not Long Island, and that is the Rockaways. So that is ultimately where I bought my fourth property. That is Rockaway Beach, right? So that is past Far Rockaway. If you guys know, let us know if you know if you're familiar with the area. Let me know in the comment section. I'm curious to hear. Who are my New Yorkers here familiar with the area? Rockaway Beach, let us know down below. Rockaway Beach is interesting, it's a dichotomy. You have the super low end of it, which is section eight, and then you have the higher, wealthier end of it, which is like Atlantic Beach or even Long Beach, and you have some really wealthy, expensive houses there, and then you have some low end. This property is kind of borderline, so it's not necessarily in the huge upper luxury, wealthy area of Rockaway Beach, but it's by no way, shape, or form in the very low income area. Still a Section 8 play, and we'll be talking about that in our next video when we talk about how much I'm making. We ended up locking in a 7.99% interest rate on this property. Yes, it could have been a lot worse, especially being it's a DSCR loan, which is an investor-friendly loan. It definitely could have been better at the same time, but hey, it still cash flows today, and that's, also, that's important. If it cash flows today, it will cash flow tomorrow and you could always refinance down the road. And what's great is this property actually appraised for a lot higher than the original purchase price. So original purchase price on this property was gonna be 495, okay? It is a duplex, a two one duplex, so a two bedroom, one bedroom duplex. The utilities are split, so if it was not a section eight play, then I would only have to be covering the water because the electric and gas bills are split, the metering. But because it is a Section 8 play and I ended up renting both units out Section 8, I am the one responsible for the, both of those bills. But down the road, 
If you wanna get some other tenants in there, I could have them foot the bill on the utilities. And pretty low maintenance, right? Already in very good condition. It was a turnkey property. There was a little bit of repairs that had to be done, but nothing too major. It was essentially rent ready, ready to go. So let's talk about the numbers. 495,000 was the original purchase price was going to be, but it appraised much higher. So we'll talk about some seller concessions that went on. Now that price at that time, great price. And now even just months later, still a great price. I mean, you cannot get a duplex in the area for less than 600,000. And you can get something that needs a lot of work and a rehab, but as far as a turnkey property like that, that was 99% ready to go, it just doesn't exist, especially if you venture out into Long Island. But Far Rockaway even, Rockaway Beach, if you're talking about that, it just does not exist. So I'm really happy with the purchase price, and I think looking back already, just a few months, you know, when you're buying that property, maybe a week before, days after, you're considering it, am I gonna regret this? You know, you're just a little bit nervous about what's gonna happen and what's gonna go on and if it was a good buy. But now looking back, I think it was a great purchase and I'm gonna be holding on to this for quite some time. So then the appraisal came back $75,000 higher than what the purchase price was gonna be at 570,000. So in that scenario, you wanna go back to the seller and maybe you wanna get some seller concessions in there. So that way they're getting more money, but you are ultimately coming out with less out of pocket at the closing table. You're gonna have a slightly higher loan amount, but for that, you could put less money down. So if that happens to you guys, see, we'll play around with the numbers, see if it makes sense to go back to the seller and ask for some seller concessions. The numbers worked out that we ended up settling at 515,000, 514,800 to be exact. Less money out of my pocket. I think it was like $18,000 less than I had to come back with at the closing table. And yes, the loan amount was higher, but again, I can always refinance down the road. As I've done before, I ended up going with a DSCR or a debt service coverage ratio loan on this property. That is an investor friendly loan. You don't have to show any income. They don't even look at your tax returns, any paychecks, they don't even look at your bank statements, nothing. It's more so focused on your credit profile and what that property produces, what the income it produces versus the mortgage, the debt service coverage ratio, basically just a fancy term for income versus expenses. And you know, this is a great option for you guys that can't show income on paper. Maybe you're self-employed. A lot of self-employed people and business owners use DSCR. So definitely look into it. If you're not familiar with DSCR already, I could definitely recommend a good broker that has some good options for you. And you should be able to qualify depending on the property, the subject property that you'll be purchasing. And when I locked in the loan, that was like peak, peak interest rate market. We're talking September, October. So it ended up being just basically as high as I would have gotten a rate on a conventional loan anyways. So it just made sense to do DSCR, especially because I try to show as little income on paper as possible. I put 20% down on this deal. So that was a lot out of pocket, but the equity is there and it was instant equity on day one because of the higher appraisal amount. And I can ultimately unlock that equity, whether it's using cross collateralization or getting a home equity loan or line of credit. So don't worry guys, I didn't lose my money. The equity is there and I could put it towards another deal in the future. There were some challenges along the way getting to that closing table. My attorney was super on top of things and discovered that an HOA might've been created, which definitely would have put a hiccup in the deal. Ultimately, we found out there was an initiation of an H HOA, but ultimately it was never created. So that was one challenge we face and definitely delayed things. So far, so good. No major headaches or complaints. It was the first time dealing with Section 8 tenants and dealing with that process, which was all unfamiliar territory to me. I so far have not dealt with any Section 8 tenants. Ended up doing both Section 8 for both units. So we'll be talking about that in the next video. But like I said, guys, if you have the money right now, if you come across a deal, even if it's not gonna cash flow a lot today, think about the long-term game, think about what it could be down the road with rent increases, the property appreciation, the internal principal pay down, the tax benefits, and then ultimately having to refinance in the future. If you can, do buy today. I'm telling you, you're gonna lock in a great deal. That loan amount is not gonna change. And I think you're gonna regret it because once these rates start to trickle down, even just 1% in change, you're gonna start seeing some inflow coming in of buyers and these property prices are gonna start skyrocketing once again. It may even be like 2020, 2021 era pricing. So guys, if you could get a deal today, if you have the money, I would say do it.
With that being said, we'll be talking more in depth about this property in the future. If you have any questions, let us know them in the comment section. I'm curious to hear. I'd be happy to answer them and help you out with any of your rental property needs or curiosities. Let us know them in the comment section. But with that being said, guys, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on. If you want to get some free stocks today, go ahead and use the Robinhood link down below in the description to get some free stocks. Also sign up with today's video sponsor, Aura. Stay safe and protected online. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you so much.